Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this Game Maker Studio tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create MB Crids for every room that you go into and have them be dynamically created and dynamically destroyed as you enter and leave them. And this gives you a lot of flexibility to be able to just have one object that persists through your game, but is always updating and creating the right map for your level for all of the enemies and players that are using that MP grid. So this is going to be kind of advanced, and I'm also going to jump through a lot of the functions because I've covered how to use them and kind of why you'd want to. This, I just want to show you how to dynamically create it inside of the room and show you that it's going to be working. So if you're looking for how to use MP grids or maybe why you should, check out the other videos on my channel and you'll be able to find that information there. So with that being said, let's jump into it and create a couple of sprites. We're going to need to create basically... A wall sprite and then we'll make another one to show that that one is not being in the grid so I'm just gonna name this SPR sprite 1 and we'll leave it 64 by 64 and we'll just fill it in with a bright yellow color and then we'll make another sprite SPR sprite 2 same thing but we'll fill it in with a orange color or yeah it's kind of orange kind of like a salmon color okay we're gonna make objects out of both of those so OBJ object one, give that a sprite, and obj object two, and give that a sprite. And the last object we're gonna need is our obj grid. This object we're going to set to persistent, uh, and we don't need to assign it a sprite at all. This does need to be visible though, because we're actually gonna be drawing the grid later on, so make sure you, that you do leave it visible. And in our room, we are going to place that grid inside of there, and then we're going to add a couple of rooms because we're going to go through these rooms. So don't need to rename them or anything, but we'll change the background color just so that you can actually see that we are changing rooms. And we'll do three rooms all together to show that that is working. Okay. Now, uh, that is really, really bright. Oof, we're going to bring that down. Okay. Now, inside of these rooms, I'm going to go ahead and place uh, these objects. It doesn't matter which one we make uh, inside of the grid to be collided with, but we'll just say that object 1 is what we'll put in there, and object 2 will not be collidable. So inside here, we're going to just hold down Alt, and I'll just place a bunch of these here, and then we'll place a bunch of objects 2 as well. And the same thing for room 0. We'll go ahead and do this different pattern and then for room two we'll go ahead and then create a pattern inside of here and <laughs> there we go so each room is unique we'll be able to see the grid inside of there really efficiently I think so let's open up the grid what we're gonna do is add an ev create event inside of here and initiate the the grid so that it is available in every object because in your game you're actually going to have enemies or NPCs or the player that is going to be, need to be accessing this grid so we're going to want it to be globally accessible so we're going to say global.grid equals mp grid create now there's a lot of information we need to put in here and I'm just going to throw it in here because hopefully you already know kind of how it works. So we're going to start it at the top. We're going to do the number of cells. We're just going to do 64 by 64 wide because that's the pixels of our objects and I think that'll just be the easiest to see. So room width, uh, oof, can't type, room width divided by 64, room, I really can't type, room height divided by 64. Uh, cell width 64, cell height 64. Okay, now that makes our grid and any objects can access it inside of here so they can make their custom paths as they need them. And then we just need to add our instances to it. So we're going to say MP grid add instances. And we pass in global.grid. Object is going to be obj object1 and it is not going to be precise. So this is going to work for the first room and we can test this out by going into the draw event saying that we are going to draw the grid 
So we're going to draw set alpha at 0.5 so that we can see the grid and still see the objects in the room. Uh, I think it's MP grid draw. We're going to draw the global dot grid. And then we're going to set the alpha to 1 for the rest of it. Okay, let's go ahead and press F5. And then that's all that we should need to do to get it up and running. So you can see here that our grid is working correctly. We have this red around it, and it is not around the object 2 because that is not what is supposed to be on site, inside the grid. So that is working properly. And it's kind of hard to see here because the yellow objects completely uh, cover that up, but you can see it on some of them. So that's great. Now, we need to be able to move rooms. So I'm just going to add a mouse left pressed. I'm just going to say room go to next. That way we can look into the next room. So even if our grid is persistent and it stays there, if we go into the next room, oh, we have to actually click on the grid, don't we? Ah, let's change that to a global left press. So global left press. There we go. Don't have to click on an invisible object anymore. Okay, so if we move to the next room, you can see that that grid is still there, but it is no longer updated correctly. So that doesn't work at all. And we've also changed rooms, and we have a grid that is no longer useful because we're not there. And because an MP grid is created with a create function, it is a dynamic resource that must be cleaned up. So that means that we need to destroy it when we're done using it, but we can continue using the same name the whole time as long as we clean up the grid that no longer actually is relevant to the room we're in. The way we can do this is by using two events inside of objects that are really, really handy. And we're going to do that right now. So we're actually going to change this create event. We're going to right click and change that event to other room start. So now when the room starts, it's going to make a grid specifically to that room. Then we're going to add another event under other for room end and we are going to destroy the grid so we don't have any memory leaks with mp grid destroy pass in global dot grid and that will work just fine and now we are taking care of dynamic resources and we'll have the correct grid in every room so if i left click you can see here that now those yellow ones are still being updated correctly. It looks like some of them aren't, but again, that's just because they're put in there exactly correct. And if we go in here again, there's that grid that it can't be, you know, passed through. So that allows you to have dynamic MP grids for every room cleaned up correctly, no memory leaks, and it works great. And you can also go in and change uh, what is added inside of here. So. You don't have to call MP grid add instances from OBJ grid. So in a different object, if you had like a specific level object or something, you could add unique objects inside of each room by just calling this function and passing in global.grid. We can use this same variable all the time because as long as we destroy, like we are, the grid that we're no longer using, we can continue to call it and create it because it creates the resource, releases it, and then it just assigns that resource to the same variable, which is totally fine. So that's how you do it. That is dynamic MP grids for every room that you've got in your game done correctly and safely. I hope that helps. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something. And as always, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you later. Hey there, it's Aaron. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, I encourage you to check out my Patreon. You can join for as little as a dollar a month and get access to our Discord channel and be able to vote on the next series that I tackle. You'll also be able to do one-on-one -on -one training sessions for $10 a month or more if you want more time with me. We can work on whatever it is you're struggling with and I can help you make that awesome game or project. You'll also get access to my courses. Every time I publish a new course on Udemy or Skillshare, every one of my patrons gets that course for free. So even if you support me for just $1 a month, that's a great steal because I'm going to be putting out a lot more courses this year. I want to do YouTube, Udemy, teaching, game development full-time, and you can help make that happen. So 
Thank you very much. I hope you'll check out my Patreon and consider supporting me on there. And check out my courses on Udemy and Skillshare if you're wanting more content from me. Have fun making great games, and I'll talk to you later.